Hey, this is James Lee. Welcome back to Advanced Python Programming. This module will talk about arbitrarily nested types. We've talked a lot about uh, complex data types like list of lists, dictionary of dictionaries. Now we'll talk about arbitrarily nested data types. So remember, if you have any questions, use that question and comment box. So let's get started by looking at the module topics. We'll first start with an introduction to nested types. What are they and why we might want such things? Then we'll talk about different nested types. We'll look at an example or two, and then we'll do a lab working with them. All right, so arbitrarily nested types can be created to rep represent what's known as complex data types. So we'll look at an example, but before we do, it, sometimes we, we have complex data that needs to be represented in variables. So for instance, we may have a list of records. Each record can themselves be containing records, and in those records there can be lists of data. So that would be a list of dictionaries of dictionaries of lists. So we have like four levels of uh, data within the data types, and that would be arbitrarily complex. So let's look at this example. This example, grades, is going to be a list of dictionaries. Each dictionary will be data for a particular student. The value in the dictionary will be lists of the grades for that particular class. So pictorially we see the list grades. Here it is. This is a list for each student. So for student zero we see the classes that student zero was involved with, English, Algebra, History. And for each class we see the grades. So now we have three levels of data, a list of dictionaries of lists. So this is what's known as complex, arbitrarily complex data. So we see down here student 2 also has an English and history, algebra and history set of grades. So this structure can, is implemented in complex1.py. So this program is going to do the following. First it's going to create the data type called grades. Grades is the list. Then it's going to keep track of the student number in the variable student num. And for each dictionary we'll grab the keys, the subjects, in sorted order. And for each subject, average the grades for that subject in the variable AVG, average, and then print the average of all the grades. So let's look at this code. So what complex1.py does is it creates grades to be a list of two dictionaries. Each dictionary has three key value pairs, English, Algebra, History, and then the value is a list of the grades. So that constructs the data structure, which is a list of dictionaries of lists. Then we'll keep track of the student number. So as we go through, we'll just print the student number. And then we'll say for record in grades. And then we'll print the student number, one, two, and so on. Grab the subject of that particular uh, dictionary. That would be like English, math, etc. And then we'll sort those subjects. Then loop through the subjects, printing the subject name, and then computing the grades. So let's just run this real quick here, and we can see the output before we get too much farther into the code. So we're printing student number, and then one, and then student number, then two. Then we'll print each subject here, algebra, English, history. Notice they're in sorted order. Then we'll start our average at zero, loop for grade and record subsubject. Printing the grade, 92, 94, 91, 99. Uh, uh, keeping a sum of the grades for us to compute the average later. Then once we get through all of the grades, we'll take the length of the list, take average, divide by that length to produce some average grade, and then we'll print the average over here. So notice we've got 92, 94, 91, and 99. The average is 94. Down here we've got 78, 75, 95, 99, the average is 86.75. And then don't forget to increment that student number for next time. All right, let's look at another example. This example will create a nested type. First of all, it's going to be a dictionary, and this dictionary will be keyed by an account number. So it'll be a dictionary, and the keys of the dictionary will be some account number that we create. 
The value associated with account number is itself a dictionary. So this will be a dictionary of dictionaries. And that dictionary has values that include strings, um, a nested dictionary, and a, a list. So let's look at the examples. Here's our outer dictionary, if you will, called data. It's indexed by a record number, some sort of account number here. The value associated with the account number is itself a dictionary. And notice this dictionary has a string, another string, another string, another string. This could be stored as a string or as an int. And then phone is a reference to another dictionary. And then kids is a reference to a list. So this shows that for this particular record, this record is for John Doe. It shows John Doe's address. It shows a collection of all of John Doe's phone numbers. And then we have a list of kids of John Doe's children. So this is definitely an arbitrarily complex data type because we have a dictionary of dictionaries which contains strings and numbers and dictionaries and lists. So let's look at the code that would implement such a data structure. All right, so we'll look at a program that's going to create this nested type and process it. So first, the program will print each record of the dictionary data. It will then prompt the user to enter one of the account number's keys. And if that record exists, print the record with pprint. Then a new child is added to the list kid and then displayed. So let's look at the code that processes this data structure in this way. Let's look at the code to create this complex type in complex2.py. So first we create the dictionary and notice that this is the first account number. The value is itself a dictionary. The dictionary has several keys and several values. Most of the values are strings, but the value associated with the phone is a dictionary and the value associated with kids is a list. So here I have a dictionary of dictionaries of strings, dictionaries, and lists. And that's uh, used to create the three records. So we've got record 47756, 59912, 777, excuse me, 77146. All right, then we'll process the data. So we'll loop account in data.keys. We'll print the account number. Let me run this here so we can see the output as we go along. So we first print the account number. That's printed right there. Then we take key through that dictionary. So we index into data with the account number, which is itself a dictionary. Grab its keys. Take key through those keys. And the keys are city, kids, name, zip, phone, state, address. If the key is phone, like it is right here, we'll print phone colon, that's right there, and then we'll take type through data sub account as a dictionary, sub phone is itself a dictionary, grab the keys, the keys are cell and home, and then we'll print the type, cell or home, and then we'll index with the account number, with the key phone, with the type of phone, to get the value over here. If the key is not phone, if it's kids, which it is right here, we'll print kids, which we do. Then we'll take for kid in, index into the hash, and then index into that hash to get the list of kids, and we'll print each kid. So here we just print Joe. If it's not key or not kids, if the key is not phone or not kids, then we'll simply print the value, which is shown in the other fields. Okay, so we dump the, va the content of the dictionary out. Then we prompt the user to enter a an account number, which is shown right down here. So I'm going to enter account 59912. Then we read in the account into key. Check, does my data structure have that key? Yes, it does. So we'll do a pretty print of the data structure, which is done right here. You can see how that pretty print works. It looks very nice. We'll print the kids. 
Oh, the kids is empty right at this point. But we'll add to the kids, we'll append Mary, which means um, Jane Smith just had a baby. So we'll append Mary to her list of kids, show the kids now, and we see that now her kids in, is the list, Mary. Okay, now it's time for lab four. This lab, we're going to read a file called lab4.dad. And this file will contain information about a collection of movies. Including in the information is the ID number for the movie, the name of the movie, the director, who's starring in the movie, and what year it was made. So here's an example. This content kind of wraps because of the limitation of the slide here, but there's three records in this file. The first record spans these two lines. The next record spans the next three lines, and the last record spans three lines. So let's look at the last record as an example. So this is record 8334. That's the ID number for the movie. Then we have the name of the movie, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. We have the director of the movie. Actually, there's two directors, Terry Jones, Terry Gillum. And then we have who the movie stars. So as King Arthur, we have Graham Chapman. As the Black Knight, we have John Cleese. And then the year the movie was made, 1975. So you can kind of see the format where we have the ID number and then a collection of key name and then a value, key director value, key starring values, key year value. So you're going to read each line of the file and build this data structure. For the first line example, You'll uh, look at, it'll be record 4995. The name of the movie is The String Life of Brian. The director is Terry Jones. Now we're storing the director as a list because in some of the movies, like the one we looked at, there was more than one director. Starring and then the uh, character and then the actor, character actor, and then finally the year. So you're going to read from the data file, building this data structure then the output of the lab should resemble this. So you'll execute the lab, you'll show the movie number, the director, the name of the movie, who it's starring in the year. So you'll generate this output in your program and you'll do so for each of the movies. Optional. Try this if you want. Add functionality to do the following. Write the data structure out to a file. Allow the user to modify the data in a record. This, this means the user can go in, change the, the value in the record, and then you'll be able to write it back out to the file. Then make the use of this program menu-driven. So you'll create a menu and you'll add things to the menu like create a new movie, display a certain movie, modify a movie, etc. Here's the content of lab4.dat. We see there's three rows in the file. Record 4995, record 1488, and record 8334. So our job is to parse this. So let's look at the code that does that. So here's lab4.py. So I start movie info as an empty dictionary and then loop through the input file in read mode. Strip off the new line character. Split the line. This splits it into the key, name, directory, starting, and year fields. So Grab the key and create a new entry in movie info for that key, which is itself a dictionary. The dictionary, the name of the dictionary, is I'm taking the name and I'm splitting it on the equal sign, grabbing element number one. So I'm basically tossing away name equals and grabbing the result, the rest of that entry, which in this case is Life of Brian. The director, I'm creating a list by taking the the value of the director and splitting it on the comma, which is, uh, in this case, simply Terry Jones. In this case, Terry Jones, comma, Terry Gilliam. We'll split that on the comma. And the year I'm going to take and split it on the equal sign and grab element number one. So starring is a little bit more complicated, so I'll take starring, I'll split it on the equal side, grab element number, element number one, which is the string like Brian, Tilde, Graham Chapman, Vertical Bar, etc. Create an empty dictionary for that element within my dictionary for the, the key. Split that string on the vertical bar. For each element within vertical bar, I'm going to split it on the tilde to grab a key and a value. 
The key is the name of the character. The value is the name of the actor. Then at the end, we will simply loop through the movie info, printing out the data. So let's see what this looks like. So I will run lab4.py. And I see, for instance, for this last record, I see the movie number that's printed right here. Then we loop through each of the keys. If the element is a string, we'll simply print the string out. If the element is a list, we'll join that list with the comma, print it out. For instance, Terry Jones, comma, Terry Gilliam. If the instance is a dictionary, then we'll print the key, which is starring. And then we'll go through each of the items in that inner dictionary, printing their values. All right, if you have any questions, remember to use that question and comment box. Thanks for your time, and I'll see you in the next module.